Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and in today's episode of Hermitcraft, we are going to break ground on a new mausoleum at Hall at Carnassus. However, before we do, since it's in the middle of the battlefield, I'm going to run over here to the G-Team Potion Dispenser, and I'm going to potion up, man. Last thing you want to do is get out there and find out you're not fire resistant or swift or healed enough, right? So, whoa! Okay, I thought those were going to actually shoot them onto me. Um, that's, okay, I guess I'll save these for when I individually need them. Well, I was going to do fi uh, fire resistance kind of first. How, how long does that last for? Six minutes, great. And we'll save the rest in case we accidentally, you know, really get creepers and stuff mad at us. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to scout out a 22 by 22 square area or squaria that we can use for our mausoleum's primary uh, footprint. So we're going to just run out here real quick. You might say, Joe, how many um, uh, ender pearls did you bring? Because that would have been smart. None. It's my fault. I can only blame myself. But, you know, if there's one thing I'm good at, it's blaming myself. Oh, hey, I like this bunker. Did we make this? It's got some sort of trap in there. <gasps> Ooh, potions. Man, we're just so good at, like, making emergency bunkers and stuff. Okay, so the core concept of this next uh, bunker that we're going to be building is we're, it's going to be a model of the mausoleum at Halicarnassus that we can use as a forward operating base. It'll be less forward than my Parthenon, which might have been a little bit too aggressive. Are they, Do they still have mobs down here I need to worry about? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Okay, okay, out around the corner there. Um... It'll be less forward than my forward operating Parthenon, but forward enough to still be advantageously located forward of our base. So, what I'm going to do here is I need to set aside a 22 by 22 area on top of this hill. Which you might say, Joe, that's kind of a lot for somebody who didn't bring an axe to clear out trees. But yeah, yeah it is. Okay, that's, that's a very fair and rational assessment of one of the weaknesses of this plan. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. But let's see how big 22 meters really is. I mean, how big is 22 meters? Oh, this might be really big. Yeah, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, 22 meters might be pretty big. But, on the plus side, yeah, this is, this is maybe really big. Um... There's no way to really make this smaller and have ten pillars on either side with gaps, though. So, I guess what we're going to do in true Joe Hill's fashion is just lean right on into it. I might actually recenter it a little bit that way, so I'm going to remove a few blocks on this side. And so, two, three, four, five, just to kind of keep it centered on the hill, six. So, for every block I remove over here, I need to add ones over here. Oh, but that's going to push me right into that bunker there. Although not entirely, so that's that's probably pretty okay. Three, four, five, six. Okay, great. We're, we're in good shape here. So, this also, I'm realizing I did not bring enough dirt to actually really... I'm going to need to go get some dirt to make this part of the hill um, feel reinforced. So, we're going to just go ahead and quickly start working on this part of the structure here. Oh, that's not really how that part of the structure should work. I guess one thing I could do is maybe save some nether brick by building part of the base into the hill here, because the base is supposed to be a total of 19 meters tall. So if some of those 19 meters is uh, right here, where it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Then I've only got to do another, like, 12 or 11 meters above that before we get to the pillars. Which would save me a significant amount of netherrack. So, why don't we go ahead and start on that. I didn't count these. That's, And I didn't bring torches. So, one, two, three, four, five. This is going to be its own whole thing, guys. But you know what? Actually, oh wait. Oh, I can't put the pillar placement in yet because... That'll be wrong, too. So, anyway. I figure... You know what? I'm just looking at this. Let's get a sense of, from that tower, if this goes up... 
um, from here, another 11 blocks. Okay, and then it gets to here, and we start having some of this stuff going on, right? What is that? That's that's going to look pretty impressive from over there. That's going to look pretty impressive indeed. Okay, I think that we are in really good shape on the whole with this. So, I'm going to go ahead and start grabbing more materials. We're going to have to shore up this earthworks here. I'm going to actually break this down a little bit for the time being, because when I deploy this while everybody's asleep tonight, for real, like right now I'm just trying to trying to kind of claim this area so that nobody else accidentally builds here. But um, we will get this underway shortly. Time skip. Well, I got enough blocks, and we've successfully constructed our mausoleum at Halicarnassus. We've got ten pillars on any given side. We've got our sloped roof. And we've got a ratio of kind of general purpose walls to pillars. That's not exactly accurate, but really sets the general kind of tone of the structure. Now, of course, I would never deign to use an Elytra to directly approach the enemy base. But as part of exploring the no man's land here, with no intention of interfering with any of their stuff... It is kind of okay to go ahead and just get a quick fly over here. I want to show you guys how this structure works. It's generally symmetrical on any given side, and it's got lava bars. Now, you might say, Joe, lava bars, those sound like where magma goes to meet, you know, other magma for parties and stuff. But these are like more like magma columns. They're reminiscent of the Season 2 water columns I used in my Biffa's, uh, Biffa's Bowl Mausoleum. Now, this, like the forward operating Parthenon, is intended to be used as a base of operations for our team as we, you know, advance generally toward the enemy. So what I've got here is a nice little place where our team can stage forward equipment. What I'm figuring I'll do is I'll kind of put in little bit of netherrack here, like, you know, some sort of netherracky structure, whoops, and just kind of lay this out in such a way, whoops, I have nothing appropriately really set up in my hotbar here, but kind of just create this platform where we can put some beds and some chests and have workbenches, things that we might need if we are partway through a prank. Let's say that we want to prank their base really badly. And we don't have, we, there's too many materials that we need to bring into their base. We don't want to risk having a trap blow up the entire base's worth of materials. So instead, we will stage our forward materials in this incredibly dangerous place full of lava, right? So, you know, we'll get some nice, comfortable G-Team quality beds. Boom, boom. So now if it gets dark outside, we can just stay in here. And we'll also have some official G-Team crafting benches. Look at this, like there's one now. I feel ready to stage some sort of, you know, attack on the enemy base already. But wait, what's that? We can additionally store chests here. Goodness gracious alive. Golly gee, golly me. What are these things that I see? They are platform expansions to make room for chests. Now, I put a whole bunch of chests in the Parthenon and then false blew it up. So, I'm hoping, or actually, she didn't blow it up. She knocked it down one block at a time, which I'm still laughing about. It hasn't stopped being funny, really, to me. Um, But, you know, what was I going to say? I was figuring, we'll just go ahead and kind of get this platform in here like so. A little bit of light. Yeah, now we don't have to worry about stuff spawning up here. This is a general forward staging area. So, we're going to put a nice little sign here that explains what this is. Done! Now you guys might say, Joe, well the original mausoleum at Holocarnassus was like a mausoleum in honor of a particular, you know, of particular dead, not just a broad concept of what a mausoleum might yet be. Does this represent some sort of particular dead? Not, not especially. I was thinking about explicitly making this a mausoleum to the concept of the broken Parthenon 
but I realized to optimally do that, I'd need to build a baby nesting Parthenon inside of this mausoleum, and that would just be a little bit too much, you know? I don't want, I don't want to do too much. I don't want to be extra, as the kids say. I want to be precisely where I need to be. So we're just going to throw some more, like, torches here, even this out a bit, and I'm figuring what I'll do is put some water over here on this side so that players can just drop straight down into here. Now, this might look like a pretty dangerous place to hang out, but luckily our team has plenty of fire uh, resistance potions that I did not equip. Now, how do people get down from here? Well, look at this. I built a little pool that we can jump into on our way to the enemy base, you know? Hop right out there. And there's no ladder on this side, so the enemy can't just climb back in and attack us, right? Pretty smart. That's the Joe Hills difference. So we're just going to grab some of these other water buckets here. And then take those to make a comparable pool when people climb up the ladder from our side. Now, I was thinking additionally, one thing that I should consider doing is actually enclosing the ladder such that it's not visible from our base. And you might say, Joe, if you're going to enclose the ladder so it's not visible from your base, the enemy can climb up inside of there. You know what? That's actually why I haven't done it. I hate the ugly stripe that the ladder makes on the back of that, but it is so good for people from our side to be able to shoot at this from over here. I haven't figured out a good way to obscure it without actually ruining the concept. I guess I could have a door inside... But once again, if there's a door inside that the enemies can uh, go through, then um, unfortunately that, that means that the enemies are free from getting shot at while they come through here. So, boo to that. So here's what I'm thinking. We're just going to swing it out this way a little bit and build ourselves a nice little pool. Actually, let's, uh, that's a little high, isn't it? Dang it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna create the area for the fallen into pool, right here. I figure that should probably go back this far, actually. Yep, there we go. And we will put some walls in the pool, some floor here, just in general. We don't want the water to go everywhere. That's gonna be a a concern, or of concern if that were to be the case indeed. Some glass on this might have looked cool. I'll concede. But you know what? We can't um, we can't always have all of the materials that we want for every project. This project, unfortunately, has been already pretty pricey in terms of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Water? No, not water. Lava, and in terms of nether brick, things like that. So, I'm going to go ahead here and just kind of set up a nice little partial checkerboard pattern that'll slowly fill in here. Let me kind of take from back there. Uh-oh. That is going to be making some cobblestone if we don't block it off. No. Oh, good. It's actually evaporated back out. Good job, Lava. You did it. Okay. So then we'll just go ahead and break this. Excellent. Now, you might say, Joe, that water's not deep enough. Well, I know. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, source block pool here. And then... We can just make the water deeper on that side. It's real easy. I don't know why nobody ever thought of doing this with Minecraft, ever. Never seen a single person place source blocks, um, you know, over water. That's that's just not done, you know? But that's why we're here on Hermitcraft, to uh, really push new boundaries, you know, to seek out new life and, and civilizations, and to just broadly go where no one has gone before. So... Right now, in particular, we're going to go to bed, but when we wake up, that's a little bit, you know, that's that's a hazard, I think. We're going to just kind of put in some rails there, just in general, some nice little bed rails. Whoops, oh no, that was not intentional. That'll probably be fine. But yeah, here we go, some nice little bed rails, so we don't accidentally fall into the lava. And, uh, boom. Look at that. It might not be the most perfect, beautiful structure ever, but I was able to build it while everybody else was asleep, which is important because they're all crazy Europeans, and they sleep a lot at 
times that I need to build stuff. So that worked out okay. So we're just going to kind of place these here like so. Swing past here. I think on the whole this is going to look okay. This is going to be not a must-have for any team that's serious about engaging in a prank war effort on the Hermitcraft server. But it's a, gl it's a glad to have. Our team will be glad we have this when we need to stage forward efforts. You know, we can come in here, we can hide, we can climb up ladders. Now, ideally, actually, what we would want to do would be to have multiple ladders so that the other team doesn't know precisely where we're going to come out, right? So, let's say that we had another ladder here that followed this pillar. Whoops. And the other team didn't know that somebody was going to pop out there. They kept seeing them pop out on the other ladders. They'd be like, what? Whoa! What kind of mad infiltration technique is this? Somebody came out right here? Super sneaky. Also, I made sure not to use gravity-affected blocks for this lava-supported roof. Because I thought that that could go poorly. Like, way bad. Way bad, guys. Kept that in mind. But look at this. Now we have a nice little place we can get good high quality overview of their base and stage future attacks from without being too much in their face and I'm in the that's that's also part of why I put a lava pool here or a water pool here because I knew inevitably I would f bang my head on the lava also look we've even got a concorp drone they're so friendly he's just hanging out over there L let me uh, get a potato out so that I can eat while he burns Enjoy your lava, Concorp. Okay. So I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Sorry it was... Sorry I wasn't able to include much of the building on camera. But sometimes that is just the way that life goes. You might have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. That is thanks to a $50 a month Patreon sponsorship from Shea Snail. In lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a poem of my own devising. Don't pretend you're not ecstatic. Don't play at quiet ennui. Sometimes tables break your way. Sometimes there's victory. Celebrate those good times. Celebrate and smile. Enjoy it while it lasts. Though I hope it lasts a while. Until next time, y'all. This is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.